guys, welcome back! This week, something different! As you know, I've recently managed to finally get a 128 plus 3 ZX Spectrum in the box and in mint condition! But despite the 3 inch drive being in extremely good operating condition also, soon realized that it couldn't read the discs. I was already expecting this, cause it's pretty common, as the rubber from the drive belt can really deteriorate over time. This machine has around 29 years old and never had the belt replaced, so off to eBay I went and purchased a brand new belt from Retro Cables, a Spanish store from where I've purchased in the past all sorts of HD and RGB cables for all my retro consoles and computers. So let's start by removing the 5 screws in the bottom of the specky. One of those is hidden behind this sticker, sort of a warranty seal. I wonder if this machine is still under warranty. <laughs> Time to flip it over and remove two more screws on the side of the machine next to the floppy drive. Now let's pull the top case with the keyboard carefully, cause there's a small connector that must be unplugged from the main board. Now we can have full access to the interior and the device we're trying to reach. Here's the belt that I bought from Retro Cables. This insignificant looking little thing will breathe life into the plus 3. Now this little screw must also come out. There's two more little screws that holds the plastic front cover of the drive. We need to carefully remove those also and the front cover will be free and won't be damaged due to mishandling or something. On the back of the drive we need to unplug the power cord and data cable. These are firmly connected so apply the necessary strength to disconnect them from the drive. Now we can safely remove the drive and work outside the box or in a controlled and safe environment without damaging other sensible parts of the plastic shell of the spectrum. Inspecting the drive we come across another little connector that must be pulled out. Again, this may need extra force, but be careful not to damage the cable itself. There's also three even smaller screws that we must remove to separate the metallic casing that protects and holds the disk drive in place. Again, by inspecting the drive one last time, we come across another tiny connector that, again, must be unplugged. As you can see, both parts of the drive are still practically glued to each other. That's because there are some cables that are rooted next to the board by a couple of metallic clips. Just lift those and we'll get more space to be able to safely place the belt. Here's a sneak peek to the interior of the drive. Pretty basic and simplistic. I've already cleaned it. The original belt was in a sort of melting process. It was practically glued to that metallic interior and gladly wasn't broken into tiny pieces and scattered all around just like a couple others I've seen before. Now it's time to grab the new belt and try to place it where it belongs without twisting it. This is very important, it must be completely flat, not twisted. I tried a few times before I nailed it. It's really easy to twist the belt, so again, pay extra attention on this stage of the process. And that's pretty much it! The new drive belt is in place and ready to go. But before that, we have to put the specky back together. Hope that you've memorized which screws goes where. I advise you that you also film or take pictures of the whole process so that if in doubt you could replay the footage and know exactly what the next step is. 
don't forget to plug back in those two tiny connectors to the board of the disk drive. The three little screws that joins the metallic casing with the board, the plastic front of the drive itself and its two screws, and finally the power and data cables in the back. Before closing the plus three, remember that there's another little connector that must be plugged into the main board as well. I bet that you completely forgot about that one. Only seven screws to go, the two on the side next to the disk drive and the other five on the bottom of the specky. Close the last hole with that warranty sticker and that's it! Job concluded with success, the drive can now read three inch discs again. Guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial, it may come handy for some of you one day, who knows? In the meanwhile, the response to my latest episode about Barbarian the Ultimate Warrior was simply overwhelming, thank you so much! And if you're new to the channel, there's a bunch of awesome stuff to watch, so please do and I'll see you all in the next episode!